We will now proceed to treat a 59-year-old male patient with an affected left knee. The gentleman suffered a minor trauma approximately two months ago, which resulted in medial knee pain. Knee pain was partially present previously, as the knee is already affected by a degenerative condition, but the trauma triggered a worsening progression. An MRI revealed a moderately severe medial chondropathy, a patellofemoral chondropathy, and meniscosis with suspected injury to the posterior cone of the medial meniscus. Therefore, we have jointly decided to pursue an arthroscopy, a minimally invasive treatment, with a bone marrow aspirate injection. We will proceed with arthroscopy, confirming that the clinical picture corresponds to the findings on the MRI, and we will strive to be as minimally invasive as possible. We will perform the fewest maneuvers necessary within the joint to minimize aggression, and then proceed with the bone marrow aspirate injection. Prepare the device by applying an anticoagulant to all the components. Recommended, heparin at the concentration of 2000 units per milliliter. Thoroughly prime the device paying attention to all the components, external surfaces, internal areas, syringe, cannula and stylet. Prime with anticoagulant also filter and injection syringe, if you plan to use them. During the procedure leave in the Vaclock syringe an amount of anticoagulant equal to 20% of the total bone marrow aspirate volume. Identify the starting point of the iliac crest, pinch it and precisely insert the trocar at the marked location. Descend vertically, make contact with the bone and maneuver the device in a swinging motion. The crest is particularly dense at this location, so it is normal to exert significant effort to penetrate the cortical layer. It is crucial to maintain control of the movement. Use a hammer when necessary. We are now initiating the cortical cutting process. The device should enter approximately 1 cm below the cortex to perform the initial aspiration. Disconnect the internal stylet and connect the Vaclock syringe. Perform the first aspiration just below the cortex. After the first aspiration, reinsert the stylet and go down further, up to the desired depth. Turn the gear until contact with the skin and check the number below the arrow to know the remaining excursion. Remove the stylet and reconnect the syringe to make the next aspirations. Perform the second aspiration. Turn the handle counterclockwise to retract the cannula up to the next above target, 0,5 cm every 360 degrees of rotation. Proceed with the third aspiration and repeat until there's no more remaining excursion. Reinsert the stylet, withdraw the gear and remove the device. If necessary, the obtained marrow aspirate can be filtered to remove clot cellular coagulation or aggregation using the 270 micron purification filter connected to the syringes supplied with the kit. Upon completion, the patient will be bandaged, and discharge can occur within a few hours, immediately after anesthesia wears off. In the postoperative period, early physiotherapeutic treatment with mobilization is planned, always avoiding joint irritation. 
for three weeks, the patient will use crutches and will be allowed minimal weight bearing, as the goal is to minimize joint irritation and reduce the post-intervention inflammatory response as much as possible. This should enable the patient to achieve optimal recovery, also in terms of bone marrow activity. Complete recovery typically occurs several months later because, even in a knee with a relatively low degree of arthrosis, there is usually an irritative phenomenon that must be kept under control as much as possible. It should not be counteracted with medications, but rather with mechanical agents such as ice or physiotherapy treatments to avoid diminishing the reparative response of the bone marrow. Upon completion of the recovery process, we will assess whether the outcome is satisfactory for the patient or if more invasive replacement treatments will be necessary.